Favorite record? And you next, because you collect these, don't you? I, yeah, I kind of inherited my dad's collection. Oh, cool. So you together. Does anyone else have vinyls? Okay, what's one you remember? Um, Databases are fun because they have data in them. Do you want to say OPETH? How do you spell it? O-P-E-T-H. And um, who's there? All right, MJ. So effectively right now we've built just a single spreadsheet. Nothing new about that. Now here's the challenge. Um, not the challenge. Here's the opportunity. You notice I have two boards for a reason. Michael Jackson. Might we want to record any information about him? Maybe you want to be able to do a search of all albums who were made by an artist who's no longer living. So what might we need to record about each album artist? Yeah. So we could have a uh, Boolean variable. Boolean is true, false. We could do that. Or we could do what? We could do year of death. And again, with numbers and years, I tend to use um, text. OK, so is Opeth still alive? Okay, so if Opeth is still alive, the value in database terms for this doesn't have a value is null. So it's very common in database land, instead of uh, one way that we can think about the data is if they don't have a release or a death year, they're alive. That keeps us from having to do a second column called still alive. And we could store still alive as a Boolean. Anyone know what Boolean is? Math people do. Yeah. yeah, one or zero. So Boolean is zero, one, or true, false. So we could do that. And uh, I generally, people generally prefer having one column rather than two columns for recording the same effective information. But we'll put that in just for fun. So null, null, MJ died oh, 10? When did he die? Yeah. It means there's nothing there. Okay. Yep. And so in a database, uh, in database applications, sometimes you'll see them display null in empty cells. Sometimes it will be assumed that an empty cell is null. If there isn't something that there is a null in the system, um, it just may not be displayed that way. All right, we're going to do something a little trippy here. I have freeze-framed myself from the previous discussion with the class so that we can look at the structure of the data that we put on the erasable board. When I say structure, I mean how is it organized? In this case, it's a table. It's a data table. We could organize data in lists. We could organize it in a big blob or a big heap. But usually we want it in some sort of a structure so that we can get at it and read it systematically so we don't screw up different things. If I needed to digitize our table about albums, I might use a spreadsheet. And in fact, that's exactly what I did, is while I watched myself, I transcribed the markings from the erasable board into a spreadsheet in which our familiar structure arises once again, which is we organize data into rows, and each column corresponds with a particular attribute or some quality of the thing we're trying to to record information about gets put in each column. In our case, they're music albums. So for each album, we record the name, and then the rating, and then the release year, and then the artist, and then the year of the artist's death. Each row underneath that first row is a particular album. One album, one record, and that is a double meaning. One uh, vinyl record, but also in database term, it is one record meaning one row, one instance. You can imagine a filing cabinet full of student records. One student would get one row, and 
another student would get another row. And so in our database land, we are thinking about how can we design this table such that certain data integrity rules exist. For example, it might be the case that we accidentally type, say, the name of this album in the rating column, which the spreadsheet lets us do because the spreadsheet does not enforce data type rules. This is just one example of the way in which I want us to think that a spreadsheet is great for limited use data situations, and especially situations in which you're the only one using that data and it's not very complicated in the sense that there aren't many different sides to the data that we want to record. In our case, if we were imagining storing a lifetime of albums, we would need to have more structure in place because we'd be dealing with a lot more data and each record has quite a bit we can record about it. So enter the database application. In the previous steps of this module, you've been instructed to download LibreOffice Base, which looks like this when you have opened up the collected albums.odb sample database. And let's take a moment and familiar ourselves, familiarize ourselves with LibreOffice Base. It looks at first pass to be a little bit dull, but it's not dull. It's just that this is kind of like the access point. It's the, it's the airport to the entire prosperous land of databases in which we might have tables lurking and queries, occasionally a form, and most definitely a report. So these are the launch windows for each of these different, we'd say, database objects. And since we're working with tables, we click tables, and we have seen the pre-designed album and artist tables. In order to interact with these tables, we right-click we click once to select the name of the table, and then we use the right-click feature, the context menu, to access every conceivable operation that we would take on this table. Some of these have very intuitive names, like delete or rename. There are two that are specific to database tables. The first is edit table, and the second is open table. The simple difference is that edit is designing the columns, and open means actually seeing the table in traditional data table format. So let's start by clicking edit and comparing what we see in this window and what we already had in our spreadsheet. So you can see that uh, we see the same names, but the relationship is inverted. It's rotated 90 degrees. You can see that in this edit view or the table design view inside the database, each column or each thing that we want to record about our album is listed on an individual row. In other words, it's a table about a table. It's a meta table. This is a meta table. This table is what we use to say, okay, when we convert this plan into a real data table, I would like my first field, field is another name for column, I would like my first field to have the, the title name and it should store text, as we talked about in the previous video. Text is the data type. It can store A's and B's and C's and spaces and percent signs and numbers as well. And then if we want, we can give it an optional description. So it's critical to realize in database land, we will have to be switching our brains 90 degrees when we go between design views and let's do the open view. The open view gives us a more familiar table. Now, in this case, we haven't entered any data, so we can actually go ahead and do that. The open view has converted, let's put these close, the open view has converted the individual columns that were listed row by row in the edit view table into our familiar spreadsheet-like table that we can enter data into. So now I can say ghost reveries, and I can give it a rating of 4, release date of 2011, the artist is Opeth, I'd never heard of Opeth, and we're going to use the null value. Great, so now we have a populated data table, and we can move on with the, uh, the coping with the fact that and addressing an interesting uh, pattern that we've seen come up here, which we have saved the artist names twice.